hi, it's Friday after work, and I decided instead of making a regular video about one topic, why don't I go ahead and talk about what's been going on the whole week. Um, I've seen other people making these videos, I've always wanted to make one. Um, it seems popular, so I'm going to try. Uh, one caveat is that I'm not going to talk about one genre. I'm, I'm kind of eclectic, which means I'm all over the place. And so I'm going to be talking about a bunch of different uh, topics. And hopefully you'll be along for the ride. So on the way home from school today, I'm a teacher. Um, I stopped at a local record shop that was on my way home. I just started at a new school. So this record shop was new to me. It was called uh, Caveman Records. I think I'm missing, It's I think it's called Caveman Vinyl. And it's mostly known for selling uh, instruments like guitars and amps and stuff like that from what I could tell. Uh, but they do have two rows of records and they also, I found out as I was leaving, they have a whole wall of singles, which I'll have to check out next time. So I actually bought some albums that I, I think it, I could have paid less for. So for example, I bought this one. This is definitely a dollar bin record and I paid three. But it's in mint condition, and so I decided, why not? Well, the back isn't in mint, actually. It's kind of old, but the cover's gorgeous. So I decided, why not? And then I got this uh, More Themes for Young Lovers by Percy Faith and his orchestra. I also paid $3 for that. Now, I might have this one already, but this one is a gorgeous copy. And so I thought, well, that's also a dollar record, but... Now this one I paid $3 for, and I'm very happy with it. It does have a little bit of a scratch right here on the cover, but this is Nat King Cole. Look at that. It's a gorgeous cover. Great back to The Touch of Your Lips. I can't wait to play this one. So now I'm moving from three to four dollars, and I bought Guitars Greatest Hits, Tom and Jerry. I just, I really like the cover. I, I can't wait to listen to this one. It's a Mercury Hi-Fi Stereo. Great, great album. So I paid four for that. Again, I think I could have found that for a dollar somewhere, but okay. Uh, you know, so school just started, right? This is the second week with the students. And I figured I deserve, you know, stop and, and get some records. Now, this one is so cool. $5. And this one is Neil Wolf. I can't even, I can't read backwards, sorry. One Order of Blues, but I got it for that cover. I don't know who Neil Wolf is. Look at that gorgeous gorgeous cover and yeah it's got some great songs I'll have to do a vinyl uh, exploration on that one and then this is the one that I you know I spent the most on so I I usually try to stick to a couple dollars but if I see one that I really really want you know you got it you got to splurge and so I paid ten dollars for this one so I saw him once I think in a movie and wow is he a good singer and so his name is uh, Miguel Aceves Mejia and look at this cover it it is meant it's it's just gorgeous and so I can't wait I can't wait to listen to this one all right so those were the, those were my pickups for albums on, on the way home uh, so I have something to listen to this weekend, right? Like I don't have stuff to listen to. And so next I wanted to talk about like coming up this week or hopefully this weekend, I'm, I'm preparing some videos. Um, and I'm going, I have been listening to some albums that I have in my collection that I never really listened to or that I just bought so that I could do vinyl exploration. So the first one is going to be, uh, this one. So it's it's by Steve uh, Hunter, 
It's called Swept Away, and yeah, I mean, obviously I bought it for the cover. I, I, I just buy the artistic covers. And then I listen to them, and um, I'm gonna do a vinyl exploration on this. I don't know anything about him. I listen to the music first, and then I start doing the research. Uh, but what I found out, it's guitar, so he's a guitarist. And then it, I'm gonna do my, th my third uh, Olivia Newton-John vinyl exploration, and spoiler, I've loved the other two, but I don't like this one. So maybe I'll go into why, and of course I'll go through the songs and where they come from, and I already kind of think I know why I don't like this one as much, but we'll see. Okay, and so another one I want to do, it's not really a vinyl exploration, it's going to be compare the CD to uh, the vinyl. And I actually really like this album. It's a great, great pop album. Uh, and so I'm going to be comparing and hopefully you'll want to watch that. Okay. So that goes, that's it for the vinyl except for, for one. So my husband is a huge Madonna fan, huge. And so she just came out with the box set and everybody's showing it. Not everybody, anybody who likes Madonna. Right, and so uh, I just thought I'd show it because they were expensive. So first off, I, I got him the the album. It's a double album set, right, of number ones. It's called, oh, it's called Finally Enough Love. And then when you open it, right, it's got her albums and I never really looked at it. So it's in black vinyl and I don't know if the, yeah. It says Madonna finally left love and it's the same as the back, I guess. And probably the other one is the same. I didn't look at it before. Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, but I also got him the box set because I wanted him to have it, right? Because even people online are already talking about how it sold out. Now this has six, six uh, albums in it. And it's, it's actually really kind of pretty because it's the same image over and over again, but with different different backgrounds. Like there's a, for example, there's a there's a red one, and there's a yellow one, and so on. So, um, it's a very very pretty box set. I'm I'm so glad I got it for him because, like I said, it is uh, selling out, and he loves Madonna. So I mean, he doesn't get buy that many albums. He he really likes high energy. So those are if we find one they're expensive so for me my albums cost three five you know kind of dollars his albums usually cost like 20 to, to 30 right but he doesn't get that many so it's okay all right so got got those madonna in the mail and what else did i i got a couple things in the mail uh this week so recently i showed a video of my Universal Monsters Horror VHS collection, and I went ahead and I, and I bought some more, and then they came in the mail. So they were lots on uh, eBay, right? And so I, I got these two different lots in the mail. Oh, I'm pulling them over, extreme close up. Okay, so I got I got more in the series, but something that was disappointing right it's sometimes on ebay it's hard to tell the quality and they do say used right whatever but of course like they come and you get this of course if, if you have a collection you want them to look really nice but i didn't have this movie and even though it's a little bit beat up i'm glad to have it until i could find something else and i was able to get dracula's daughter which i didn't have that one either I believe I have this one, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. I already have that one. Um, House of Frankenstein, I think I have it. But this is a new one for me. The Creature Walks Among Us. I just love these old VHS, look at that. And I already had Bride of Frankenstein. So I, I, I got a couple of doubles in, in, these, in this set. And then I, I didn't have Son of Dracula. So I was happy to get that one. And this one's in pretty decent condition. But with this collection, 
there was advertised one, um, you know, Phantom of the Opera. And I was like, well, cool. I'd love to have it. It's a silent movie version of it. And what a cool cover. I don't mind adding that to my monster set. And so, and I opened it up. It was this recorded tape of the Muppets Take Manhattan. And so I wrote, I wrote the, the I, I think it was a guy. So I wrote him on eBay. I was like, hey, I don't want my money back, but you really should check before you send them out. And he said, oh, I'm really sorry. I can replace a few. I'm like, nah, don't even worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, they're VHS tapes. It's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But I don't want Muppets Take Manhattan. <laughs> a recorded one and then uh just yesterday i got another there i don't usually buy these but they were silent movies on vhs and it was so cheap i didn't really want to pass it up almost all of them are silent except the third man by orson welles and this movie is creepy so if you've never seen it orson welles is just a, a great um a gr great director his movies are always interesting, if nothing else. I haven't seen all of them, but I've, I've seen a bunch of them. And so the other movies are all uh, silent, and I got another version of Phantom of the Opera. But what's interesting about old movies like, well, like these is that every VHS version would be different. They would be different cuts. They would have different angles. And so it, it, it's just nice to have a couple of these. So I got um, Phantom of the Opera, I got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and it's really funny because it's, they all say, record in an SP mode, right? So that they let you know it was the best quality. I don't know if any if you remember from VHS, when you recorded them, there were three modes. And of course, I always recorded on EP so I could get like six hours on a tape. I got this Metropolis, and you know Metropolis, like, come on, that is the worst cover Ever. It should have been, you know, the robot. Whatever. Whatever. The Lost World. And that one has Wallace Beery in it. And he's... he's. I really like him as an actor, but I haven't seen any of his movies in a long time. And I'm trying to remember the name of the movie series that he was in. It was about... It was a... He and this woman were on a boat. And they were... I believe they were husband and wife or not. Or I don't know. Those are good movies. So, I, anyways, I like Wallace Beery. And then, also, I got um, the Marco Zorro. I mean, come on, silent movies on VHS. The only thing I wish about VHS, uh, silent movies on VHS, right? I wish that they could take those title pages out and just put it subtitled because the movies would seriously be about 30 minutes shorter, right? Instead of having, like, watching them move their lips with nothing at the bottom... And then reading what they're saying, it like doubles the length of the movie. So. But of course they can't do that because then it interrupts the music and what have you. Anyways, it's part of the experience, right? I just, I don't know about you. I do, I really do like watching silent movies. I really, I, you know, you have to be in the mood. I When I had TCM, I think they would play, they would play a silent movie every Friday night. At midnight? No, that's when they did midnight movies. I can't remember, but I love TCM. And they used to do a silent movie once a week, and I, I used to love watching those. Okay, so that those are the, the packages that I got in the mail this week. Um, I guess next, I, I'd like to talk about some of, the, some of the shows that I watched this week. So I finished Ozarks, the, the most current season on Netflix. No spoilers, I won't say anything. But wow, what a great show. It's, I don't know, like Ozarks is, it's right up there with Sopranos or, or um, Six Feet Under. I mean, Ozarks is one, you know, or um, Breaking Bad. It's like one of the, the best shows ever made. I mean, I know everybody says that about a lot of shows and I haven't seen every show, but Ozarks is just so good. The character arcs, the writing, so good. And not only that, it just, it really holds your attention, what the characters do, and um, I just love it. So then, I also, last night, um, finished watching the Resident Evil show that's on Netflix. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to recommend that show. If you, if you like the video game and you just like cheesy sci-fi, 
Um, you'll enjoy Resident Evil. It's not a great show at all. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't watch it. I enjoyed it, right? It's it's not great. I just, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and then I was surprised because Lance, I had to look his name up, Lance Reddick is in it. And he's an actor from The Wire. Such a good actor. If anybody from The Wire, that, that just, that's, that show was so good. And the acting was superb. So he was in that show and he's in this one. I thought, wow, he's really wasted his talent. But I was wrong because he, I won't spoil why, but he actually got a, a real chance to act and to show his acting chops. And it was actually quite impressive. So um, I'm, there was another reason I was glad I watched Resident Evil. And of course, if, if any of you have, you know, want to make any comments about anything I'm talking about, whatever, please, please, please put them, put the comments. I'd love to read them. I'm going to go ahead and take a sip of my coffee. This is my favorite coffee cup. Here we go. And I got this on sale for like $2 at, ooh, I just spilled some. I got this on sale for like $2 at GameStop. I was shocked. This is my favorite. It's such an awesome coffee cup. Yeah, I spilled some. All right. So I also started watching Space 1999 concurrently with a friend of mine. My friend lives in Iowa and um, she, she likes uh, Star Trek, right, the original series, a lot. She loves Star Trek and so do I. But I mean, she likes it tenfold more than I do. And one of my, uh, one of my thousands of followers uh, is T-Cat's Deep Vinyl Tracks. So first of all, that was a joke. I love all my followers and I love anybody who, who comments. So I'm very, very appreciative of all the support that I've gotten. Um, especially from, uh, uh oh, the name's escaping me. Uh, this is bad because she's been so supportive. It's, it's uh, something ghost. I'll put it in the comments. She's been so supportive and so nice. I, I, I love her to death, right? She she hosts an online show. Uh, it's not called an online show. It's it's a live show. She hosts a live show, but unfortunately, it's it's when I'm getting ready and when I'm at school. She must be in a different time zone. Um, so anyway, she's been so supportive, and then uh, there's there's been a few uh, other people who have mentioned me and gotten me some some more followers, and I really thank everyone for all the support. Um, I really like how the vinyl community is back and forth with all of the, the contests and competitions. I'm trying to get more people in the comic um, world to do this, but um, you know, I'm such a small channel that I have almost zero impact. I'm hoping that will grow, you know, over time, you know, so. We'll see. But anyways, back to Space 1999. TCAT's Deep Vinyl Tracks asked on my response to, uh, you know, show three things about space. Um, he's like, why is no one talking about Space 1999? And I, I wrote back to him, I'm like, you know, to be honest, I've never watched that show, right? When I watched it as a kid, I was probably traumatized because I watched it. That's a strong word, but... I watched it and it was so boring and then basically people are just standing around talking and then all of a sudden they start, you know, falling over or something for no apparent reason that I understood as a kid. So maybe I've just always been scared of Space 1999. So I, I asked my friend, hey, um, do you want to watch the show? Or maybe she said she would, I forget how, but we decided to watch the show concurrently, right? And so I, I think I'm five or six episodes into it. And as we watch them, we text each other and, you know, we're laughing about it. It's, it's pretty funny and it's not bad. It's a good show, but it's, it's very British and, you know, and it is like every episode should be about 30 minutes, but they're 50 minutes and it just kind of goes on and on, but I'm really appreciating it. I don't mind slowing down for older TV and older shows movies not at all i'm i'm in it for the ride the opening is hysterical if you don't do anything else just just watch the opening so martin landau was like this and 
he turns. And then Barbara Bain is like this. And she turns. It's so funny. <laughs> um, I love it. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of really getting into it. And they, they have the funniest um, jargonese in the show. First of all, this is not a spoiler, right? Because it happens in the first episode. The moon breaks away from the earth and goes flying out into space like a ship. So it's a moon ship now. That doesn't make sense to me because if wouldn't the moon break apart? And the reason it broke apart, I think, if I remember correctly, is because there's this atomic explosion. Like they were, they were putting, they were using the moon to to house like nuclear waste or atomic waste. And I guess it was heating up the planet's core, and so that caused such uh, vibration that it shot them out of the Earth's orbit. That doesn't make any sense. If anybody know, if anybody knows what really happened, please put it in the comments because that's hysterical. When it just rip apart, I I don't know. But anyways, I'm along for the ride. You know, suspension of disbelief. It's, it's pretty funny. So my friend and I are chatting back and forth like, hey, you know, episode to episode, we're, we're texting each other. And then all of a sudden we're like, what? So online, the episodes aren't in any order. So you'll watch a playlist and there's actually a couple different playlists on YouTube. And so I started watching one playlist and without realizing it, I jumped to another. And so... I, w I watched three in one order and then jumped and then the next three were in a different order but they had them as the first episodes so I guess there was no I, I looked at, I looked this up online once we figured this out I looked it up online and I guess there was no real rhyme or reason for syndication uh, and they they would just they the episodes had continuity but they didn't the ideas didn't bridge from one show to another and so um, they can really be watched in any order. One highlight so far is there's, um, I saw Ian McShane, he was so young. I was like, oh, I know who that is. I know who it is. And so Ian McShane, right, from Deadwood. And so as soon as I realized that, I couldn't get, I couldn't get the word sucker out of my head. Now, I'm a, I'm a teacher, right? So you're not gonna hear me swear on this channel just in case any of my students ever watch this so i'm just not gonna swear but that word <laughs> but it stopped the whole rest of the episode right poor ian mcshane uh anyways deadwood another interesting very very interesting show especially that shakespeare episode i need to watch that one again where they just start out of nowhere they start speaking in shakespearean language <laughs> when i first watched it i was like what is going on but anyways uh, Deadwood. Let me take a sip of my coffee. I hope you're not bored yet. So, those were the TV shows I've been watching. I I haven't watched any movies this week that I know of. Yeah, I think uh, it was it was a pretty busy week. Um, and I, I was basically, because I've been watching Space 1999, and there's 48 episodes, and I've only watched about five or six. So I've got a ways to go. Um, but let me talk about uh, what I've been listening to as far as uh, CDs. And I already told you the, some of the albums I've been listening to because I'm going to be making uh, uh, vinyl explorations. So I'm a huge, huge, huge Chris Isaac fan. And right now there's a, what do you call it? Um, a reissue of Heart Shaped World. And I have the cassette, but I don't have the album. I've got most of his albums, but I don't have that one and it's on white vinyl and it was a record store day something and I go to all the record store days and I didn't get that one and so I'm kind of bummed I never got Heart Shaped World and now it's going to be like $80 but anyways I'm not talking about that one so if you've been showing off Heart Shaped World I'm giving you the evil eye um, so I've been listening to uh, Beyond the Sun so this is Chris Isaac basically recording Sun Records hits. And of course it's Chris Isaac, it's freaking phenomenal, right? And so here we have uh, some of the artwork up inside. And there he is. 
Um, I was lucky. So the friend that I was talking about, her name is Judy. We got to see, uh, we were both in the military together and we got to see Chris Isaac a bunch of times when we were in the military in San Francisco. And um, I've seen him since. She, I think she saw him more, um, more times than I have. So, but anyways, love Chris Isaac. But I saw him about a year before the pandemic and he was still so good. He's entertaining and his voice is amazing. His most recent album, I got it on vinyl. It's good. Okay, so Chris Isaac, Chris Isaac. Anyways, um, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> so Chris Isaac, Beyond the Sun, the, all the CDs I'm talking about I've had for a while and I've, I've just pulled them out and I'm re-listening to them. So uh, this is a double CD and um, it's, it's really good. Okay, so then the next one I've been listening to is Sting, If on a Winter's Night. So I know for, for many Sting is, uh, what we'd say, like an acquired taste. I've always liked Sting in, you know, as... I, I guess it's because I, I, I kind of like the way he, his lyrics are, you know, kind of literate and he refers to literature and, and stuff like that. Like, you know, Roxanne, I think, is it Roxanne? Where he talks about Lolita and that kind of thing. So really interesting. So anyways, would a lot of people like this? I don't think so. If you like classical music and you like Sting to some degree, you're going to like this. In fact, this was Put out by Deutsch Gramophone. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, but Deutsch Gramophone. I, I really like that record company um, just because of the artwork. And this actually has really, really pretty artwork. I don't have this on an album. I'd love to have it on an album, but this is really, really good. And some, like I, I put this on and I'm reading, and some of the songs I just stop and I stop reading and I, I start really listening because it's really good. I, I, I recommend it. Um, but again. It's not for everybody. You have to like classical music. But this isn't classical music, right? Because he's singing. But it, it's very cl classical-like. Yeah, something like that. So also I've been listening to an, um, an album by uh, Steve Martin and Edie Brickell. Uh Love Has Come For You. I like this because I actually don't know who these people are. I should look that up. But they reenact that on the back. So this is a, this is a great this is a great album. Steve Steve Martin, if you didn't know, he plays the banjo and he's, he's very good. And this album, and of course, Edie Brickell has a great voice. They're really good together. Uh, I think they may, at least made two. I have I think I have this one. I'm not sure if I have their other one. And I, they might have an, another one. Right? But this is a really good album, and some of the some of the songs like really stick out. For example, the sun is gonna shine. I could start singing that one. Like it's 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 such a good song, um, but a lot of them are really good. This is this is a really nice album from beginning to end. And then finally, I've been I pulled out this Shelby Lynn, and this is just a little loving, and it's uh, inspired by Dusty Springfield. Now I'm not sure exactly. I kind of want to do a, a, a CD overview of this one. Oh, look at that great picture. I'd like to do a CD overview of this one because a couple weeks ago I, I did um, Dusty in Memphis, the the deluxe edition, right? I did a review of it. And, and here she's covering a lot of Dusty songs. I don't know if all of them are. There's only 10 songs on this. I, I wonder if there's a deluxe edition with more. And this is really, really good. She slows Dusty's songs down a little bit. I don't know if jazzier is the right word. Not pop orchestra. I need to listen to it more closely, but she, she really does slow them down and, you know, gives the song, lets the songs breathe and she sings the, the lyrics very more subtly. Nice, a good album really good album good companion to uh dusty of memphis um I, I do recommend these uh this album and all of these albums okay so let's go ahead and 
and I'm going to talk about what I've been reading recently. You know, that's going to, I, I bet at this mark, right? Okay, right around the 30 minute mark, I'm going to see a huge drop, you know, of the 10 people who watch this video, like I'm going to lose eight. Right, so let's start off with, uh, I, I bought a couple of magazines because I, uh, I'm just interested. I've been, at, at comic book shows, I've been picking up the older magazines for the cover art. And there is a company called Warrant. And basically what they're doing is they're trying to recreate the format of Warren magazines. The, the old, like creepy magazines. And wow, do they do a good job. This feels like a 70s title. Okay, so when you pick it up, first of all, look at that cover. It's stunning. Let me let me pull it out of the mylar. Yeah, because I'm fancy. Right? Please see my see my uh, my short video on protecting your magazines with mylar and how they look in them, right? Mylar from BCW. So then you get this beautiful magazine. It costs $5.95. It's a beautiful magazine. And then you get basically a character like the Crypt Keeper, right? And so every tale starts with jokes and ends with really, really bad jokes. Think of Tales of the Crypt, how the Crypt Keeper would come in and just basically ruin it by telling some really, really corny jokes. But anyways, it's part of the charm, right? And so when, when you, go through the magazine it's a black and white magazine and the stories are hit and miss but they're they're only a couple pages each and they're fun and they're they're in the horror you know horror vein and this is only the sixth issue of this magazine and they 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 put out a couple a couple magazines one is like a vampirella light type of magazine similar um I really, really enjoyed this. It's it's a fun, corny read, and it, it you know, it's horror comic books basically, right? And and it's cheap, five ninety five for a, a magazine. Of course, it's because it's basically black and white. But I'm so glad I, I bought that and that I read it, and I'm going to keep buying it. I also decided to pick up Mad Magazine because I was like, why not? I haven't read Mad in years, right? And so there was a monster-themed issue. And since I was in the Universal Monsters, I was like, let me just give it a try. And I'm not finished with it, right? So as you can see, there's a, there's Poltergeist on the front. And on the back, they have Hell Frazier. I mean, already, I'm. Uh, it's making me laugh. I'm only about halfway through this, and... There were so many times when I just start laughing out loud. It's, it's, it really did bring me back. Now I'm wondering, and this is also five ninety nine, but this one has glossy and color pages inside. Um, I'm wondering if I think the stories that are in here are reprints from earlier issues. They're just like I don't. I'm not sure if anything's new. I would have to check that, right? But. I'm gonna give you an example. Like, well, first of all, they did they did a shining one that was pretty funny. I was laughing. Um, the shiner, and I just want to show this one pager. They did a medium one too, which I appreciate. I love the show medium. Uh, where is it? This thing. It was so. It caught me off guard. Okay, it's a one pager, and it's called. Sorry, it's already making me laugh. Cathasper, the friendly elder god. Okay, it's dumb one page thing, but man, it was making me laugh. There's like Richie Rich and all the characters are like, they go insane and rip out their eyeballs when they see him. It's it's so weird, quirky, funny. Um, I'm enjoying reading Mad. I don't know if like I'll still enjoy it after two or three issues, but it, it really did bring me back and I look forward to reading the rest this weekend. So I've also been reading uh, The Fade Out, which is 
um, an Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips uh, collected edition of Crime Noir. And this one takes place in like McCarthy era uh, Hollywood. And to be honest, McCarthy era Hollywood is so fascinating to me. I think that is like the craziest time in American history, right? I mean, besides what happened in the past, this is a modern era where it was like witch hunts in the modern day. It's, it's just crazy, right? And so this takes place, I'm a uh, place then, I'm only about like a third through, but it's very good. They're always good. Um, number one is Killer Be Killed, which I've said before, um, but the fade out, big fan of theirs. In fact, I just ordered Sleeper, the collected honors. I'm so look, looking forward to reading that. Okay, so I'm also uh, about, I don't know, a quarter of the way through Trans Metropolitan. And this has, I think, five. It's collected in five editions, so I'm only in the first edition. Um, this is strange, but never bad. It's, I don't know, actually, I'm almost done with this volume. I only have this much left. Okay, and so I can move on to the second volume. Like I said, this is strange, but always interesting. It's not boring. It's just out there kind of strange. And um, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing this and seeing where it goes. It, it's, it's very interesting. I'm also, um, I started reading Sandman. Uh, this also is in five volumes. I, I wanted to, you know, read it before the show. I've had it on my shelves. Uh, I had these comics as a kid, but, I, you know, I uh, not as a kid. You know, as, forget I said kid. I was much older, right? But I don't think I really, like, read them through. I read some of them. Uh, so now I'm, I'm, you know, reading it through, and it's it's, it's really good so far. Um, and of course I want to watch the show, but I want to get more into the comic. I want to finish the first two volumes before I actually get into the, into the show. And, um, the art's really good. And what, here's, you know, example of, of the art, but I always liked these Vertigo titles because the covers were always so interesting. Um, let me see if I can find one real fast. I see John Constantine, sorry about this, John Constantine in here. So here's an example of the cover. I mean, the art is just weird and out there and really well done. So those are the comics that I'm reading. Uh, I am in the middle of a, a book that I started a while ago and I actually put down because of my, my YouTube channel has been taking a lot of time. So I've been reading, I'm big fan of uh, Penguin Classics. So whenever I can, I try to read that. I, I, I read Pen Penguin Classics a lot and uh, science fiction. So this is Elsbeth Huxley of uh, The Flame Trees of Tika, Memories of an African Childhood. And this is actually um, a famous Disney actress. She was in a, a BBC version, like a, what do you call adaptation of a BBC adaptation of this which I would really like to see um her name is da, 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 Haley Mills okay yeah so she was in a lot of uh Disney movies and I, like two years ago I think I went on a Disney kick and I was watching a lot of the movies you know when she was much younger wasn't she in parent the original parent trap and she did both I'm not sure about that okay but anyways Haley Mills, um, so she, there she is, older. And so I, what I was worried about when I was reading this is, you know, with literature, it's become very, uh, I don't know how to say this, like, P, not PC, but very condemning about what's happened in the past. Like, for example, with statues, right? So if there's a statue of someone who owned a slave, it's got to be torn down instead of let's put up a plaque saying why history has changed, right? And so I'm not going to say, you know, I support one or the other, right? I'm just saying that when I, when I started reading this book, I was um, 
kind of concerned, right? Because because this is basically about colonialism in Africa, and you know people who go to basically plantations in Africa, and then they they start ruling over the the, the native inhabitants and taking control so that they can you know make money and send it back to England. You know, basically what plantations are. And um, so I, I'm, I'm actually waiting to look up any reviews about this until after I'm done because I want to know what modern people think about this. Like, what is their, what is their take on it? Now, um, I'm really enjoying this book. It's really well written. And it's also an interesting point of view because it is an autobiography, right? But the, the writer writes it from the point of view of the child but obviously she's an adult when she's writing it so it's like an autobiography told in a story form right she's taking the form of a character in the book to to write about this autobiography so it's a it's kind of an interesting way to do it and i'm you know because of that lens i'm, I'm looking at how they're treating the the african characters in the book and and all that. So I might do a review of this after I'm done. Um, I, I'm, I, I would recommend it. I, I like this book a lot. And I just got to finish it. <laughs> See where it goes. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, a real, it's a really good autobiography, right? And it, it puts you in that place. And the person who's writing it is astute. You know, not um, racist or prejudiced, right? Just kind of observing what's going on, observing how other people treat um, the, the native people and, and their interactions. And I mean, there are some hateful things that come up, but we're getting it through the lens of someone who isn't for that, but just reporting on it. It's a pretty interesting book. So I think I've come to the end of what I've been, um, what's been going on with me uh, this week when it comes to, to movies, vinyl, books. I would like to say that there's been a couple of really interesting uh, YouTube uh, videos that have come out. Like, um, I've been enjoying a lot of, uh, of what's going on. Like, um, I also love in the vinyl community how everyone is so quick to support each other, to, to shout out people and and say hey go over and see this this person's video so that you know we can get this person to have more support it's it's really it's really a, a community that way i i i'm so glad that i'm in the vinyl community as well as some of the others and i just would like to carry that over but that's also another problem i think my channel has because i make i make uh, videos about vinyl and then i'll make uh videos about comics and I'll make videos about Funko Pops. So I'm basically all over the place. And so I don't know if I've really found my audience yet, but I wanna, f I wanna find an audience that will follow me through all of my eclecticism, right? And so hopefully um, I would really like your uh, feedback on like, hey, I'm only interested in your vinyl. Could you please, if you're gonna talk about vinyl, like portion it and tell me when you're going to talk about vinyl or um yeah i don't need to hear about books like you know nobody's really interested in, in that whatever be honest it's okay um it's your opinion and i i i'm i'll probably do it anyway uh because you know that's just the way i am i'm i'm using this youtube channel as not only to connect with people out there but also because I find that I don't often have people to talk about, uh, for example, movies or books. And, you know, I just have a couple people, but uh, I would like to, you know, it also, it, it keeps me involved in those communities. For example, uh, I put this book down and just talking about it now is gonna make me wanna finish it, right? So um, I'm learning more about the artists for, Albums I've had sitting on my shelf for a long time. So uh, talking about these things and, and researching them, uh, 
I think keeps me more involved in, in my collection. So anyways, thank you for hanging out with me on a Friday night. I'm gonna take my final sip of coffee. In my garage, my two dogs are actually here, but they're they're uh, relaxing. So thank you for hanging out with me. And um, if you've enjoyed this, please let me know if you think, hey, you need to keep this under 30 minutes. Hey, that's totally fine too. Um, let me know, be honest. I, I'm still trying to, to find my way in uh, on YouTube. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe because I certainly need the subscribers. All right, everybody have a great weekend.